Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mr. P, and I want to welcome you to your favorite show, and that is men. Now, we're here tonight to talk about something that has been bubbling in our society. And as usual, we talk about the things that nobody wants to talk about, yet they are feeling it, yet they are seeing it. And tonight, we're talking about pornography, which is illegal in Uganda, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, great stuff. Now we're here, we're honored to have a very special guest in the house. But before we get started, don't forget this is your show. We want to hear from you. Our hashtag is NTVMen. Talk to us. Let's get engaged in the conversations. You can also follow us on Facebook and let's get talking. Kizabu, yeah. welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Doctor. And somebody mentioned that um, you're a professor in the making. Yes, I believe so. Wow, great stuff. Welcome to the show. Um, welcome here on MEN. Um, we are lucky to have an array <coughs> of, uh, of, of, of men on this show from different walks of life, different mindsets and different thinking. So some like pornography in their own way and don't understand why it has to be controlled. But others, I guarantee you, are completely against it. We do not need to mention who. <laughs> we know. We know that. Yes, yes. Yes. This is going to become an all-out fisticuffs show. I, I, I know. And Punches and whatnot. And then the others who are in between, they like <coughs> it, then they pretend like they don't. Of course. Uh -huh. But they really It's the Ugandan way to pretend. Yeah. Ah, but okay. let's first ask the doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Please but explain before, to us. Before we get to the doctor, I think it's important. Let's hear from the youngest man on the set. About pornography, okay, and, so I'll, I'll, and I'll tell you where where, where we're going. Right. <laughs> yes. um, you see, to a lot of people, um, especially in your generation, Faisal, mm. um, pornography is is not a big deal. It's just one of those things that, in fact, if you're not engaging with, uh, with pornography on any front, then you have a problem. You're being left behind in society. Is that a fact? Um, first of all. Doctor, welcome to the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be handing in my CV because I can detect porn anywhere. Yeah. Okay. On any <laughs> application. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, I would uh, I would agree with you. Porn in our generation, us, it's not really. I don't know why you people look at it as the devil. We have worse things happening to our country right now. I mean, porn is something I'm going to just watch and then move on with life. I'm even going to forget I watched porn. You're going to tell me, do you know you watch porn? I'm like, what? You check my phone, you see videos. I'm like, what? No, those are not mine. I don't even remember how that got on my phone. Because uh, from from childhood, hmm? mm -hmm. I, I think I'll talk about my, my, my first encounter with pornography. As home, mm -hmm. you know, we grew up. I hope I won't get arrested. I'm home. I'm home. I'm home. I'm home. I'm home. <laughs> and you know, and it's good I sat here because... You can run. Yeah. Hey, she'll just tell me if I've gone very far. Yeah. So, I'm home. My, my, I was at my auntie's place. She has a PC, internet, and all that. And uh, I remember back, back then we had you, you, a rat infestation at home. There are so many rats. So I'm on Facebook as ja as talking to what well, Navi mm, Navi Kanja something something some chatting no more chat. Um, there I see a uh, pop up. You know, Sandra. Sandra is online. Sandra mm. wants to talk to you, Faisal, in Uganda, Kampala. I'm like, wow. Let's see. <laughs> let's see how it goes. So I tap on Sandra. Then everything just changes. The sounds. I'm not understanding. This is, uh, I think this is my S1. Mm. So the, the things just start playing. Everything is going too fast. And my auntie's in the bathroom. She's like, hey, are they rats? You know, the sounds. It's <laughs> like, uh, are, there, are they rats disturbing you? So yeah. she runs to come to the sitting room. I didn't know what to do, so I switched off the monitor thinking, I mean, if she can't see, maybe she'll think yeah. the sound is coming from somewhere else. So she just falls in. She's like, oh. She also did not know what to say. She just looked at me. She didn't know. She's like, so should I, should I tell him porn is bad? Should I, but is he old enough? Is he, I don't know. So, she, I mean, there's a bit of a lecture after that, immediately mm -hmm. after that. But then, you see now this is just one. Mm -hmm. Now I've gone to school, uh, there are newspapers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are newspapers. There's a newspaper article that uh, was called Haina. <laughs> I don't know whether 
Okay. It's still on right now. But there's yeah. that newspaper article called Haina. People literally used to book. People used to fight for that. We used to smuggle the papers in school. Mm -hmm. And you'd rent them out like to everyone, like 5,000, just to read that story. 5,000, mm -hmm. 10 minutes. You know, we're training people to even read fast. So five thousand, so ten minutes. Right, huh? okay. Yeah, and uh, with time, you, you you leave the paper. You're like, ah, this this is not enough. Your brain is not visualizing the real concept. Mm -hmm. So you just you know go back. You're like, let me go back and look for Sandra, and see how it goes. And uh, with time, it becomes something of it doesn't make sense. Not and it's not a big deal anymore. Okay, um, Faisal, a very interesting recap. Um, <laughs> um, the, the unfortunate reality is what Faisal is, is saying is a reality for a lot of a lot of young people, mm. especially with access to the internet. There's very limited closure. Now, Doctor Kizab, you are the head of the pornographic pornography control committee. Right? Now, um, do you think that you are actually serving an interest? He's mentioned it in his opinion. There are more pressing issues. In Uganda, other than pornography, number two is—I mean, let's be honest. Are we going to stop it? It didn't just start the other day. Mm. I mean, hey, I'm—I'm I'm, I'm not his age, but uh, the pornography was you, there you even when I was porn. thirteen. So you watched porn at thirteen, Doctor Kiza? <laughs> <laughs> in the nineties. <90s>. Yeah. <laughs> Can you? <laughs> at least, yes. at least I was in the two thousand. Your thoughts but. on on that? Yes, um, I'm glad we started with him. Mm -hmm. Because um, I want to give you two scenarios. We had our very first uh, stakeholders meeting, mm -hmm. and we got about five uh, young men mm -hmm. and women mm -hmm. from Makere University. And for the first time, I heard the most profound story about mm -hmm. pornography than I, I have ever heard. And I'm going to relate it because mm -hmm. I got permission to relate it. Mm -hmm. Now, a young man came in. His age, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I'm estimating, just yeah. guesstimating. Yeah. And so, uh, in the morning, we had come on and given a keynote address, you know, uh, talked about pornography, and the PS had talked about it, the PS in Ministry of Ethics and Integrity. Mm -hmm. And I spoke, I gave the keynote, and I talked about pornography. And what I know, I was trying to connect the dots of the things that I know, but this young man came on and gave a testimony mm -hmm. about pornography. And it just contextualized this for, the, for everybody who was there. In fact, when I turned after his, he spoke like for 45 minutes, mm -hmm. everybody was in tears. Mm -hmm. And this is the story in short, mm -hmm. briefly. The young man told us how he first of all got into pornography. It was from home. Mm -hmm. Precisely, it was from his mother. Unknowingly, just like he has told us about, you know, the aunties in the bathroom. So for him, he was playing with his friends and he was around 11. And then they told him some word which was, you know, vulgar, considered vulgar. Mm. So he spoke it at home and the mother said, where did you get that from? You must have, wha you've been reading my magazines. <laughs> <laughs> so the young man says no. So she got him and beat him up. Until he admitted that he had read the magazines, which he hadn't. Mm -hmm. So, of course, when she left, he went to, to look, look for, for the, the magazines. magazines. Okay, yeah. So she, he started from there, and I think those were, those were there in the 90s. Eh? Mm -hmm. Chick magazine, and I think there was Spice, and Playboy she had some magazines from Kenya. Mm -hmm. So the boy looked at them, and everything looks, looks exciting. This is a young man, 12. I say, uh, 12. He's going to senior one. So he's going to senior one to Ontario school. When he arrives there, you know, they tease the young, the young ones, the, the senior ones. Mm. So they said, you, if you tell us an interesting story, we're not going to tease you. Mm -hmm. And guess what? The boy remembers what he saw in the mother's magazines. Yeah. And he starts relating those stories and the boys, the older boys take him aside and say, ah, tell us those stories, tell us some more. And so he looks at himself as someone who can be able to tell those stories very well. Mm. He masters them, fixes his own things. But by that time, he doesn't know what happens. Uh, he could draw. He was an artist. So he said he could draw for them a whole naked woman. Mm. And so for him, they exempted him from all these other bullying things. And he was the storyteller of pornography. That's where it st started. So the young man 
they said, okay, so wh what happens when the woman is naked after that? What happens? Mm -hmm. He said, then I had no idea. So he had to d dig some more to make okay. his stories <laughs> interesting. Yeah. So that's how he got deeper and mm -hmm. deeper and started going to cafes. Mm -hmm. To research. To research. Yeah. And then he would end up with pictures. <coughs> then he went into videos. Long story short, the boy now starts masturbation. Mm -hmm. Because it, of course it goes with masturbation. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't tell us his story. <laughs> <about that. laughs> This is when you say, don't worry about the young man. Let me just tell you this story because I say, as I said, it made everybody cry. Hectic. So this boy starts masturbating slowly and he would just masturbate and quickly it would happen. I'm sorry, I'm just going to get into the deep stuff. No, it's all We talk about. So this guy, after that, started looking for videos in cafes. He would cut a video and he'd come. As he said that they were renting out the Haina article, mm -hmm. him he would sell the videos now. Now he started to become a disseminator mm -hmm. of pornography in the school. Anyway, so many things happened. This boy got a tree somewhere in the farm and started masturbating from the tree, overlooking the town. He said when he climbed that tree, he could oversee the world of Mbarara and felt like a king. That's, what, that's where he was doing that. <laughs> 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 A okay, serious okay. story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so one day, because now what he was watching, he started with soft porn. He went into very hardcore porn, but still heterosexual. Mm -hmm. He went into men and men, women and women. He went to heterosexual, but now pushing the envelope, because that's what porn does. I have brought it in a story mm -hmm. to show you how, how it pushes, it pushes the yeah. envelope. So he then now started seeing pregnant women. Mm -hmm. Men, like three men, you know, uh, grabbing a pregnant woman and raping her. And that would be very exciting. So he went to beast animals and yeah. human Bestiality. beings. Yeah. <laughs> that is watching. I'm saying watching because I am going to tell you that with pornography, mm -hmm. you look at it, uh, you start there, then you get addicted. That is the pathway. Then from addiction, you start trying. You, 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 you act what you see. You act on what you see. Mm -hmm. So uh, time came and one day he was with his friends because now he has all these things playing in his head. First of all, he said he couldn't concentrate in class. At any time when he felt like going to masturbate, he would run to the bathrooms. So what he did also in the toilets, they drew pictures of women so that everywhere he has a point of reference. Mm. In textbooks, he would draw pictures of women and then he would tell, tell friends, hey, do you want to see something interesting? Go to page 96. The teacher would see them exchanging the same textbook, oh, so, so but they wouldn't problem. know. Yeah, what's in it? And secondly, of course, now I'm just bringing out the things he brought out. As soon as a, a female teacher, and I've, I've, I've lectured before, was in front of the class, immediately he would see the clothes dropping off. So for him, he would, in his mind now, mm -hmm. start having his way with this this teacher which means that he was not concentrating yeah. a student who had entered a um, who had entered um that school as one of the best from a remote place had now uh, and and Hima cement was paying his fees mm -hmm. she was on scholarship so, so the scholarship uh he started you know he lost his, the scholarship mm -hmm. he lost concentration in class he lost um he gained some friends who were doing the same things, mm -hmm. but he lost his, um, uh, he said he was feeling guilty all the time. Mm -hmm. So one day he goes to his masturbation tree, and this time he found a goat hmm? mm -hmm. under the tree. Hold that thought. Now, we're here at the Sheraton Kampala Hotel talking about pornography. Um, all right, this has given me a whole new different perspective about this. But don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break, and I'm sure you will too. We'll see you in a bit. Welcome back from the break. In case you've just joined us, we're here at the Sheraton Kampala Hotel talking about pornography on your favorite show that is men. Now, this show is brought to you by Obulamu and... As I always say, we talk about the things that affect the fabric of our society. 
and we are not afraid. Now we're here with a very interesting and special guest, Dr. Kezabu, from the Pornography Control Committee. She is the head, so she comes in here with a lot of authority. Now, Doctor, this is a, a very interesting story. First of all, I need to clarify, this is an actual testimony. Yes. It happened. Yes. Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, so uh, he goes to the tree where he is to do that. Mm -hmm. And this time he finds a goat. And he gets an interesting idea. Remember the ideas are coming from what has been stored in his mind. Yeah. And I must also tell you that pornography also changes the chemical makeup of your brain. The other day I actually saw a picture. It, it looked really, the morphology of the brain looked really cramped up. Mm -hmm. if you watch too much pornography. So that's what was happening to this young man. He says, I will have my way with a goat. Nobody's looking. So he says he actually puts his leg on the goat to hold it together. Mm -hmm. And the goat screams and he had, he had to let it go. Mm -hmm. So it didn't happen. Next time he saw a cow. Same thing. But then I think someone was passing by. He li leaves it. When he sees an old woman, she looks like a proper candidate for what he wants to do. Because remember, even in the pornography, mm. they push the envelope. They bring in things that are not natural. Mm. He has seen all these things with old wrinkled women and young men. So he wants to try it on the old woman. So he says one day he was coming from swimming from Ruizi River. Mm. They meet an older woman. He's a small boy. Even mm. when you see him now, he's a small bodied person. So he told the boys, do you know I can rape that woman? Like something interesting, they said, what mm. are you saying? He said, let me go. They said, he goes, he grabs the, the woman. And the woman, of course, kicks him off. And he says he scattered and ran, and they all found themselves at school. How he arrives at that place, he said, I don't know how I always arrived at that place, but I always tried, mm -hmm. not in my conscious mind sometimes. Because it reached a point when it was very <coughs> compelling. Yeah. I hope we are still together, because yeah. th this is progression. Mm -hmm. So um, at one time he also saw a chicken. It was laying an egg. <laughs> I'm supposed to be laughing, but yeah. He said, hey, "Where this egg has come from?" I can go. It's interesting. <laughs> this is how far someone goes. That is how far oh. this boy went. Then he, before he left Ntare, he said, "I have to break this habit, and the only way I can break the habit is." to now try proper human beings. Mm. He had seen everything, including even robots with human beings. Mm. So he starts buying prostitutes. Mm -hmm. Sex workers, if you want to be correct. But mm. he was calling them prostitutes. I'm relaying his story. As is, yeah. yeah, so uh, <laughs> he started buying those, and he would go with them, and still, in his own private place. And ev even for him to be able to function as a man, he had to first replay the pictures that he has seen in his mind so that he's able to, to yeah, have an erection. erection yeah. Yeah. So he said it was becoming hard and harder to get an erection. This is, I'm talking about a 21-year-old boy at that time. So he comes in his vacation. He's, the mother has a restaurant. And people who are working there are prostitutes by night, but during yeah, the day they work the, at the restaurant. Yeah. So he started with one of them immediately. And the mother later noticed, I think, that he was getting close. So he said, all these people are dead. They're HIV positive. Don't go with them. They are not your young girls you are writing letters to. Mm. He doesn't know how far his son has gone, of course. So he said, in my mind, I said, why did my mom not tell me earlier? Because I've already gone far with this one. Then he says there was an, a 14-year-old a girl who would go to school but then come and work at the restaurant at the same time. Mm -hmm. So he says one, one day he's watching his pornography under the table. And the girl comes and sees. And she says, please help me, I want to watch. He gives her the phone and she goes to the back. Now he wants his phone, so he goes to the back to get his phone. And immediately, immediately the girl grabs him. Mm. And later she confessed to him that she started watching pornography at eight years old. So she was also into porn. Into it, yeah. So that brought them together. It just looks like one, uh, you know. So um, after that, he, the, the mother, he said his vacation was so good because now he had money and he could buy any woman. 
-hmm. And so that's what he went into now. So his, his mother forced him to go to the university. He, didn't, he said that he wishes VAC was two years. He was <laughs> enjoying himself. Yes. Yeah. So he went to Makere University. But he says there he did, still didn't concentrate. He still masturbated. Mm -hmm. And he said by that time, because of many years of masturbation, that is also another effect. The veins around his penis, sometimes he would be overstimulated. He said sometimes he would see blood on his hands and still continue. Mm -hmm. Blood. He said because y you are doing that, you cannot have stop, yeah. uh, high self-esteem. You cannot, it's something you're addicted to, it's something you're trying to hide. It is something that's eating you up. So um, he trudges on, but then with many retakes. Mm -hmm. Because, of course, he was still going out to... He said, I never drank, I never did any other thing, but it was masturbation, which was very compulsive, mm -hmm. to the point that he would find himself sometimes just doing it. Mm -hmm. Because the picture is already stored. Mm -hmm. So eventually, he got his turning point. He goes for internship in Iganga. Mm -hmm. He said while he was there, he buys many prostitutes anyway. And there, there's this one prostitute that turned his life around. Mm. He bought her from above, even he mentions it, takes her to the lodge. When they are there, he fails to get an erection. He says she tried, she did everything she could to make sure that I get it, I didn't. I was not dressed, she was not dressed, we all sat there. And she told me, my, my dear boy, how old are you? She, he said he was 20-something, 20 23. He said, that's my son's age. Why are you doing this to yourself? For us, we died long ago, but for you, you still have life. Please don't go into this thing. It is not for you. Go and look for life elsewhere. Mm. All these people you're seeing here, the, the, the women, mm. died long ago. Do you want to die? So the boy left that place, and when he came back to Makere University, that's when he met that peer. He's a, he's a Muslim boy. Mm -hmm. So he met that, the, the peers who are with him at the moment. His name is not Faisal. <laughs> <laughs> so this boy eventually met people, and they made him sign a card that says abstain, and you know. Mm. He was saying, but I can't abstain from anything. I, I, I have done all these things. Mm. They said, don't worry. You can start from here and going forward. You stay with our numbers. If you have any problem, call us. If you feel like doing anything, just call someone. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened for him. He said he got a condition called, I forget, it's something like necrosis. He shakes mm. because of too much masturbation. So he's not stable. It affects the muscles in your spinal cord. It makes your back weak and you get shivers. He gets those shivers. He, say, he says he still gets them. So it's not yet corrected, but the rest, he stopped, he managed to stop the masturbation. Mm -hmm. But that was very lucky, because some people never make it. Yeah. Some people end up in suicide. If something is too much for you, and then you're depressed mm -hmm. in psychology, I, I studied psychology, mm -hmm. then you, you progress into many things and you can end up suicidal or you can commit suicide. So that also happens mm -hmm. with watching pornography. Mm -hmm. And it is very prevalent in our nation. Yeah. And many people, sp everybody tells you we've all done that. I've even mm -hmm. consulted my group. You know, we have a group of people in primary. Mm. In my primary school, some people were confessing to even have watched pornography while we were in, still in primary school. Now, yeah. I know I didn't know many things at okay. that time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But see how far it goes. And it's not, it's not only in town. See, there are very many myths ab around pornography in Uganda. Yeah. That's why he would say, after saying, you know, this happened to me when I, when I was young, but it's not the most important thing. Let's go and do other important things. Okay, but okay, okay so no, now. Just, just wait. We do have to go into a break. We just wait. We do have to go into a break. No one has said anything. I know. Let, let I know. It has been... So is this, is this going to be a four part show? Yes, it will be. Thank you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is a lot to take in. You know, I mean, there's, 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 there's quite a lot that's going on. Now, we have to go into a break. And once we come back, we will engage the good doctor about pornography. Because I think this is also a very huge learning experience, even for some of us. There's some of these things which, okay, I've never taken it very seriously. And I'll tell you why. We'll be right back after the break.
Welcome back from the break. Um, now, this is a very interesting show. It's, it's, um, I can clearly say for this season, it's, it's a very special show. Now, Doctor, um, just before Colin gets in, um, do you think that in Uganda we, under, we underplay the, the seriousness of this problem in terms of pornography? And I'll tell you why. I first of, first of all come from the school of thought. I don't particularly believe in addiction. I think in life we have choices. And we either make a choice to continue doing something or we can simply make a choice to stop it. Um, I have watched pornography. And um, before we went on air, I was telling the team here, and especially you get a lot of influence from your peers. In my case, it was my elder brothers. And then, as you mentioned, as the, like what happened to that boy, when you go to school, you, because you're the one who's watched porn, it puts you at a certain level amongst your peers. But it's, it's something which I saw, I never, there was no particular call to action, you, you know. Didn't enjoy it. No, it wasn't exciting. It was very unrealistic. Maybe also because of the time when I was 13, and the time now technology wasn't the way, the way, the way it is now. Of course, there are different factors. Is it something that is a choice that somebody can just look at and be like, I'll give you a simple example, like for true stories, movies are true stories. I, I, they're not my cup of tea. I'm not interested. So is it something that you can say you can engage in but not necessarily get addicted to? Yes. Um... First of all, you have to realize, and as you're speaking, there are, there are people who are strong, and there are people who are not very strong. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we have, in psychology, we have people who are prone mm -hmm. to addictions. And uh, very interestingly, that's a big section of our society. Mm -hmm. That they will watch something, and they will want it again and again. But you see, the nature, nobody can deny any addiction with porn because mm -hmm. it's na by its nature from how you start mm -hmm. it depends on how you start when you start with the hard stuff you might be disgusted if you're a, a new user mm -hmm. but if you start with the soft stuff like a story but with sexy new windows and takes you to places mm -hmm. next time you see a picture because they say you men are visual i've mm -hmm. heard that over again and again next time it's a, a, a whole like clip Next time it's, I've told you the progression of the, of the boy yeah. I've been talking about. So that one went through the stages until they were properly addicted. Anything mm -hmm. that gives you pleasure, because that's why Colin has asked you a question. Did you enjoy it? Mm -hmm. If you enjoy something, then you want to go back, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And that's how addiction starts. Like, oh. I, I think the dangerous thing about, about addictions is the tendency to do the escalation. You mm -hmm. end up needing a higher and higher dosage exactly. to achieve the same level. It's, I mean, it's like drugs, it's like alcohol. Your body, your mind builds up tolerance. Resistance, yeah. yeah. And, and then you, you just need a higher and higher dose mm -hmm. to achieve the same. My, my, I mean, wow, what a story. That's... What a story, I mean, just, just think about it. And I wanted to just open by saying, I mean, it's... Anyway, no, I, I won't start. I think I'll just. I'm just. I'm just. I'm I'm just. 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 I'm it's very difficult some in cases like that to realize unless someone has told you mm -hmm. what the dangers are unless someone has helped you to see much further mm -hmm. now um and i think this is where parenting comes in mm -hmm. one of the things that i find absolutely strange in our society is that parents generally find it difficult to have conversations with their kids about sex mm -hmm. Um, they, they want to send them to some auntie or some uncle or some, I mean, they, they, they want to give the responsibility of having a sex conversation to someone else who's not them. Mm -hmm. and, and I think the danger with that is that you do not know what these people are going to tell them. Because, mm -hmm. you know, porn aside, we've, we've had stories of uncles or aunt, you know, un uncles raping kids who've gone visiting. I mean, like, this is an uncle. 
Mm. Maybe he's also into porn or whatever it is, whatever takes over a, a person like that. So, so the thing I'm saying is that I think that as parents, we, we need to, to start having conversations with our kids about sex. Mm. I, uh, and, and very early. I, I, I strongly, I strongly believe early in... Is early. No, no, I'm, I'm telling you. I, you, know, you say your piece, I'm saying mine. Mm -hmm. I, I strongly believe in, in being the first authority in these matters because you're able to lay the ground. I, I talked to... I mean, my son is 11, but, and my daughter is 8, turning 9. He'll be turning 12 and she'll be turning 9. And it was early as what, two and a half years ago, I sat them down and we started having conversations about sex. Mm -hmm. um, about, of course, it's age appropriate, but you start having those conversations about good touch and bad touch and what sex is about and, and what, you know, what, what the repercussions can be. But most importantly, I have always been telling my kids and, and every young person that I talk to that sex is good and it's enjoyable. But it's got to be within a certain framework. Mm -hmm. You've got to be ready for it. You've got to be in a family scenario, you know. Because, you know, part of the challenge we had when we were growing up was, was that we were told sex is bad. It was called bad manners. Yeah. Mm. But then the guys who are doing bad manners are enjoying the bad manners. So mm. it's a bit confusing, mm. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Um, and I think that it's important to say, look, sex is pleasurable. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one of the things you get out of it. It's pleasurable, you know, it's for procreation, etc., etc., but there's a responsibility that comes with it. Mm. So if you're not ready to bear the responsibility and the repercussions or the consequences that come out of engaging with it, then you it's do. best that you hold it off until you're ready. So when you give um, young people the, 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 the whole download and say this is what it is, um, but it's better to hold it, what happens is that there are an authority on the subject Right, because the curiosity is killed. Mm -hmm. You bring that conversation on the table and say, you know, let's talk about it. Okay. But more importantly, is that they're able to take a position so when there is all this peer pressure, they can be able to make an informed decision with mm -hmm. a strong spine. Mm -hmm. So I I oh Chris, you always make it so hard. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I, I, I always so yeah. to go against yeah. Chris is always like I have to do this. It's like that tough love. So yes, yes. No, no. Yes. Go, go <laughs> it's tough sure. love. I mean, I love Chris, but it's just, he makes it so... Uh -huh. so, so here's the thing. Um, two, there, there's, there's, I think that there's an anthropological, sociological conversation that we need to have and around how sexualized our uh, country is, as a, how we are as a country. And, and that comes from when you look at, uh, you know, tribes and the proverbs that people use, that, mm -hmm. that, that, that Uganda's tribes use, and, and the language that we use. We, we, we use very graphic and, and mostly sexual idioms. And that comes back now then, because that's cool, you then have, you know, songs like, you know, farm Nazi Gala or Dipo Nazi Gala, Ngenda mm Kusipa -hmm. Farmu. These are now songs. These are the songs that people are singing about. Amasanya Lazi Negagenda. Dole Yomwan. Dole Yomwan. So, you catch up. You catch up. Yes, uh, I think Toji Kwata Ko. All those things. But so, Amasanya Lazi Negagenda is about a guy who's in the middle of the action. Yeah, and, he, and then he loses, loses his power. Loses, he loses his erection. Mm. Yeah. And, 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 and so, that's, those are the cultural things that are happening. But then there is also the actual science that's happening we, uh, where this, exactly this young man, there's a study that they, they've done at, at Mulago, uh, and, and what they're saying is that young men are presenting, they're coming and presenting with signs of very old men. Yes. So things like erectile dysfunction. You're seeing it in couples. Mm. You're seeing it in, in young people who are getting married. Mm. And you think it's because of the water and we're being poisoned, but no, it's because of the side effects. Of, and yes, stuff. yes. It's, it's, uh, so, so there's that conversation. But then there's the third conversation about how families are growing up now in, in, the, in Chris's utopian world where, you know, you have a proper family structure and parents are able to do that. That works. But there are two things about parenting. Parenting has changed from what it used to be. So a lot of people are growing up in either single parent households or they're growing up in, in households where they're not with both parents. Mm -hmm. That affects the ability or the social currency the parent has to be able to address the issues. 
uh, single parent households, you know, mothers might feel embarrassed uh, because the parents themselves are not being equipped with the skills to deal with this issue. They just say, ah, the child will just learn. All I need to do is stop them from going into it. That's the first one. But so the one is the embarrassment. And then the second one is, of course, the fact that even when they can, they, they, even when they have the courage, they don't have the skills. They're not trained to how to so, so Colin, approach the, it. That's exactly, that's exactly why I, I disagree wait, with you. Wait, wait, I'm going to close. I'm, I'm closing, I'm closing. Yeah. And then finally, the issue of parents who, because of their situation, because of the strain on marriages, because of evolving technology, parents are also keeping pornographic material in their homes. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, there's, there's so many cartoons you see nowadays online of parents who have, like kids who go into their auntie's handbags and come out with little shiny vibrators. Yeah. And it, it, uh, people think that it's funny because it's online, but they don't know that that's actually based on real life scenarios that are happening. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, uh, videos and things in people's phones and you give your child your phone, your phone is never locked. But you're in a WhatsApp group with all your OBs from Dara school. You know, you don't know who's sending what. And I think that, that because parents have access to that and because they're circulating it, because in, in, to be perfectly rational, there's no, if you're an, a full-grown adult person, there is nothing wrong with seeing something, yeah. something of an adult nature. Because, I mean, you might learn something. Otherwise, we end up back in the same situation where saying, oh, these girls are so beautiful, but they just lie in bed and just do like this. So we, we don't want that. But so I think that those conversations that what all this leads into is it is not so easy. It is a complex thing. Yes, yeah, no, and, just and just I think that, that you have done as a disservice by simplifying it. I just wanted to, to actually bring home and ask you a question. Yes. Three things. Yes. One touches on what Colin has just said. It's yes. actually part of my notes. Yes. Now, I have heard conversations where amongst some of my peers who say, look, think about it. I have a teenage son, right? Would I rather he watches pornography and masturbates or goes and has, has sex? Okay. I mean, to, it says to him it's a safer bet. Yeah. At least it's, co it's a controlled environment. Mm -hmm. Number two, um, you, we, we, you've talked about uh, people learning. Okay. Where are people supposed to get these skills from? Because especially for boys, girls, like especially in Buganda, they're saying girls who teach them these things and that kind of thing. Boys don't have that. Boys and there's so much pressure from, to Yes, and there's a lot of pressure to do that. Because, and the pressure, unfortunately, comes from the, 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 the ladies. When a young man is getting married, he's told, oh, if you can't have good sex, the, the chapati guy will be the one who will take your wife away from you. Okay. So people, th there's that hunger for it. I agree with Colin, we're in a very sexually charged society where everything is based on sex. We look at even in the advertising world, mm. what sells is you have to throw in a, a, a pretty sexual, girl. Yes. And you have to do, to, to do, even cars are being mm. sexualized. So how are I mean, we, we judge people by their sexual performance. Go na malako. Uh, exactly. You know, people use expressions yes. like that. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's in us. We, I mean, does, so does she have water? Things yeah. like that. Yes. Okay. No, no, Colin, you had no. to put the water oh. in <laughs> Oh, my no. God. No, okay. I like water. <laughs> we are not in the shower. I'll, um, I'll, I'll <laughs> take you out. Now, unfortunately, we reached that what? point in no! the show. Listen, 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 listen. Where we do have to come to an end. However... The truth be told, this conversation is far from over. So ladies and gentlemen, there you've had it. We have to wrap up for tonight. However, because this conversation is far from over, we'll be back next week with the second part of this show. Make sure you're there. See you next Wednesday.